The Jordan River, once a source of life and a testament to the power of nature, has been slowly dwindling for years. But now, something incredible has been uncovered, something that has been hidden away beneath its flowing waters for countless generations. As the river dried up, it revealed a shocking secret that will leave people around the world on the edge of their seats. What could be lurking beneath the surface of the Jordan River? And what does it mean for the future of this iconic landmark? Let's take a look at it. It is unquestionably a victim of the conflict. According to Yana Abu Talib, the Jordanian head of EcoPeace Middle East, it's a victim of people because it's basically what we did as people to the river and now adding to all this, it's a victim of climate change. Kristen Burkhart felt overwhelmed. She needed some time alone to think about what had just happened to her to let it sink in that she had just submerged her feet in the water in the Jordan River, which is claimed to be the location where Jesus was baptized. The guest, who was 53 years old and from Indiana, described it as very profound. For one thing, I cannot say that I have ever walked in the footsteps of Jesus. Here, tourists and pilgrims, many of whom are motivated by their religion, come to walk in the footsteps of Christ, touch the water of the river, and connect to the events described in the Bible. For many people, both symbolically and spiritually, the river holds a great deal of importance. In its current state, the Lower Jordan River is far less formidable than it formerly was, physically speaking. By the time it reaches the location of the baptism, the water has become sluggish and has taken on a color that is somewhere between brown and green. The Arab-Israeli conflict, which has been going on for decades, and the competition over access to precious water in a region where so much else is contested, are also factors that have contributed to its deterioration. For example, during the conflict between Israel and Jordan, a portion of the river served as a hostile border between the two countries. Additionally, the canal divides Jordan to the east from the West Bank to the west. There is no question that it has been affected by the fighting. According to Yana Abu Taleb, the Jordanian director of EcoPeace Middle East, which brings together Jordanian, Palestinian, and Israeli environmentalists and lobbies for the purpose of regional collaboration on saving the river, it's a victim of people because it's what we did as people to the river, basically, and now adding to all this, it's a victim of climate change. The river is a victim of both people and climate change. As a result, it seems to be a victim in every respect. Since its inception, EcoPeace has maintained that the Lower Jordan, which begins at the Sea of Galilee and continues southward, is in danger as a result of decades of water diversion and pollution. Only a minuscule portion of the water that once flowed into the Dead Sea now makes it all the way to its destination. Burkhart struggled with a variety of feelings as he stood at the Jordanian baptismal site of Bethany beyond the Jordan. Among these feelings was a sense of melancholy due to the diminishing size of the river. I am certain that God in the heavens is also miserable. Because of the river's ongoing appeal, both of its sides are home to competing baptismal sites where religious rites take place. This is a reflection of the river's attractiveness. In the Old Testament, the river served as a setting for a number of miraculous events, giving it additional significance. On a recent day found a woman on the Jordanian baptismal site soaking her feet in the waters, after which she cupped some of the liquid in her palms and rubbed it all over her body, including her face and her hair. Others bent over to fill bottles or cross their arms over their chests. Rustam Mikjian, Director General of the Baptism Site Commission in Jordan, spoke passionately about the Jordanian site's claim to authenticity. UNESCO has declared it a World Heritage Site, stating that it is of immense religious significance to the majority of denominations of the Christian faith who have accepted this site as the location where Jesus was baptized. Every year we celebrate interfaith harmony, and among the days that stand out as some of the happiest in my life are the days when I see Jews, Christians, and Muslims visit the site and all three of them cry, McGeehan explained. Both the Jordanian and West Bank sites provide tourists access to a confined section of the river, which they can interact directly with residents living on the other bank. There is a reminder of the river's role as a boundary between the two worlds in the form of an Israeli flag that is flown at Qasr al-Yahud, which is located in the West Bank. This location is also claimed to be the spot where Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. Jordan and Israel, two countries that had peace treaties signed between them in 1994, compete with one another for the tourists' money. From the West Bank, a number of individuals dressed in billowing white robes entered the water. Another group of people who were there watched as two men dressed in black threw river water over their heads while they stood on the bank or in the water. Oh, brothers, let's head to the bottom. Some people sang while they were kneeling or praying in the water. 
These moments of peace and tranquility are in stark contrast to the conflict that has been taking place on the river's banks. Any fresh water left in the river would have been seen in the past as empowering the enemy, said Gidon Bromberg, an Israeli director of the EcoPeace Middle East Group. Any fresh water left in the river, you are to take everything that you possibly can. According to Bromberg, from a historical point of view, Israel has taken approximately half of the water, and Syria and Jordan have taken the other half. According to a report that was compiled by the UN and Germany in 2013, Palestinians no longer have access to or usage of the water that comes from Jordan. According to the report, Syria does not have access either, but the country has constructed dams in the Yarmouk River subbasin, which is a component of the Jordan River basin. The Jordan River in the past, for Palestinians, meant livelihoods as well as economic stability and growth, said Nada Majdalani, who serves as the Palestinian director of Ecopeace. She continued by saying that it has evolved into an ambition of statehood and sovereignty over water resources. According to her, the decrease in the river is particularly disheartening for elderly Palestinians, since they have memories of how they used to go fishing, how they used to have a dip in the river. According to Bromberg, from a Jewish tradition, you know the river and its banks are a place of miracles, but it doesn't reflect a place of miracles in its current depleted state. Bromberg is referring to the fact that the river's water level has significantly decreased. Israel gave its approval in July to plans to repair a section of the Lower Jordan River, a decision that Israel's Minister of Environmental Protection, Tamar Zandberg, referred to as historic. For decades, it was neglected, and most of its waters were taken, and as a result, it effectively turned into a sewage canal, Zandberg said in a statement. In an era of the climate crisis and a serious ecological crisis, there is double significance to rehabilitating the River Jordan, the author writes. The word crisis refers to both the climate and the environment. Sandberg said in a phone conversation that the plan concentrates on a section that is in Israeli territory and reflects Israel's improved water status as a result of its desalination program, which has left the country considerably less dependent on the water it has been consuming from the Sea of Galilee. Sandberg said the plan reflects Israel's improved water situation as a result of its desalination program. It has the potential to provide a success story on that segment, and then it will enable more successful partnerships in the future in the region. It can provide a success story on that segment. This has been something that's come naturally all the time. According to the organization, the Israelis and Palestinians have not embraced a regional rehabilitation and development master plan that was announced in 2015 by Ecopeace and others. This is because there are still lingering final status peace process difficulties Jordan, on the other hand, has adopted the plan. Other efforts have been stymied as a result of heightened political tensions. Also, not everyone appreciates or trusts the work that Ecopeace does. Abu Taleb, the Jordanian director of the organization, was quoted as saying, We're always accused of being normalizers, which refers to having normal relations with Israel. Because of causes such as Israeli occupation and the absence of a solution to the Palestinian question, it is a contentious matter and it is unpopular among a large number of Arabs. Bromberg noted that he too had been subjected to criticism from a vociferous minority in Israel, which labels the advocacy of the organization as being inappropriately beneficial to Jordanians and Palestinians at the expense of Israeli interests. Bromberg claimed he had encountered this criticism. Water problems further hinder efforts to revive the area. Jordan is one of the countries with the latest amount of available fresh water in the world. This problem is made worse by the country's rapidly expanding population, which has been swelled by waves of migrants. The effects of climate change could make these problems much worse. We are under stress, so we don't have a surplus to add to the Jordan River and to revive it, said Khalil al-Abzi, a Jordanian official with the Jordan Valley Authority. We are trying to revive the Jordan River, he added, but we don't have enough water. In addition to this, he stated, we have many beautiful ideas for the Jordan River, but there are limitations. Al-Abzi has stated that he has a positive outlook despite the difficulties that are associated with the river. The alternative can be a terrible option. Al-Abzi declared, water is life, and he meant it. Life cannot exist without water, as the saying goes. One of the most obvious reasons why God dried up the Jordan River was to make it easier for his people to conquer the country of Canaan. At this time of year, the snow on Mount Hermon was beginning to melt, and the Jordan River would overrun its banks, at times reaching a width of one mile. On the opposite side of Jericho, it was nearly a mile wide. At this time of year, the people who lived in Canaan had good reason to feel exceedingly safe because there was no possibility of an invading force 
being able to cross the Jordan River and attack them. Due to the fast current of the Jordan River, it was impossible to construct enough rafts to transport a sufficient number of war troops over the river to lay siege to any of the Canaanite cities. On the other hand, God causes the waters of the Jordan River to gather into heaps and dries up the riverbed. It is now possible for the descendants of Israel to advance and take possession of the land of Canaan because a pathway leading forward has been opened up for them. A new generation has now succeeded the previous one. Like the previous one, they needed to see the light of God at work in the material cosmos. This manifestation of God's strength would inspire confidence in them as they ventured into the country of Canaan, where they would face challenges that from a strictly military point of view would be difficult to overcome. The generation of Israelites who emerged victorious from Egypt had first-hand experience with the awesome power that God wielded over the natural world when he caused the Red Sea to become completely dry. Accordingly, God demonstrates his power to the next generation of Israelites in the same way as he did to the generation of Israelites that came before them by performing the miracle of the dead coming up the Jordan River. God is the same yesterday, the same today, and he will be the same tomorrow. There have been many hypotheses put out over time as to what caused the Jordan River to become dry. The landslide theory is the one that stands out the most among these potential answers. One theory suggests that there was a landslide for the river and that Joshua just took advantage of the catastrophe to make his way over. However, the prophecy may be found in Joshua 3.13, and it shall come to pass that as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests who bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand up on a heap, the Bible says, and it shall come to pass that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon a heap. Joshua could not possibly have been aware of the impending landslide in any way, shape, or form. That's all for the video today. We'll be right back with more such videos. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel.